Today we talk about radial head fractures. And so what's new about these fractures? In fact, there has been no major changes over the past 30 years. The management of this fracture is still based on its displacement, and if this later is reconstructible or not. And in case of no displacement, excellent short and long-term outcome can be expected after non-operative treatment. In the context of sport med, the aspiration might be an option to relieve pressure and thus in theory relieve pain and improve short-term outcome. For radial head fracture with a low displacement, satisfactory results have also been reported in literature with open or atroscopic reduction and with conservative treatment, but there is still controversy regarding the indication for surgery. 30 years ago, fixation of meson 2 teeth fracture was primarily indicated. 1997, the meson classification was modified by Hodgkiss to better define the indication for surgical treatment. The presence of a block to the rotation was an indication for operative treatment. And according to the prospective, retrospective, or also systematic review, good functional mid to long term outcome can be expected after non operative and operative treatments. However, for me, there is insufficient evidence to draw a firm conclusion on the optimal treatment of these fractures, and the mechanical block to the rotation is still the only consensual indication for surgery. But for the radial head fracture with displacement or combination, surgical treatment is always required. And on this point, there is consensus. Act fixation of reconstructible radial head can be obtained by screws, whereas the plate or the tripod or cross screw techniques are required for neck fracture. For partial radial head fracture, mostly observed an impaction of the radial head fragment against the neck. So we have to open the fracture with a small bone routine and clear out soft tissue, hematoma, and atopus fragments. And oftentimes you have a second fragment corresponding to the central part of the radial head. This later is impacted against the neck and you allow to pick up it, then tilt and push the main fragment onto the neck and again the rest of the radial head to restore the concavity of this later and fix it by screws. I also recommend to use cannulated headless screw with partial or full denture. However, there are some rules to follow if you want to obtain an anatomical reduction. And firstly, I do not recommend to use only one chiware because when you screw the main fragment, you risk turning it around this chiware. And if you continue to screw it, also risk opening the fracture along this chiware when the partial denture of the screw crosses the fracture. So to avoid it, you must apply the clamp perpendicular to the main fracture plane and put your two chiwares as perpendicular as you can to the secondary fracture planes to avoid the displacement of this fragment. And then you can fix this fracture by the two cannulated screws along these two chi wires. For the radial net fractures, the fixation can be achieved with plate and cross screws technique. These two strategies provide similar strength and stiffness for the indication of transverse non community radial neck fractures. However, the indications are not exactly the same for these two techniques. Indeed, the dry bot technique is a biomechanical sound construct for the fixation of axially stable radial neck, and thus I don't use it in case of bone loss involving this later. Because for me, there is high risk of malunion with an angulated radial neck. And furthermore, I also noted in my own experience that when the screw goes beyond the bone cortical, the screw can push out spongy bone and induce heterotopic ossification around its tip. But except these two cases, for me, the triple technique might be preferred for simple transverse neck fractures since the strategy requires less exposure and the headless screw is buried to avoid conflict with the radial notch of the ulna. Indeed, the plate must be applied to the radial head in a location that don't compromise the pronospination. For community fracture evolving both the neck and the radial head, you can add one screw to the plate or fix the fracture with three or four screws. But in this case, we must be very careful because there is a risk of non-union and stiffness. But when there is a high degree of comminution, you have to act this letter is unreconstructible. And so there is only one option. It is the radial head atroplasty. As you know, many prosthesis devices are available for the surgeon, each of them with specific characteristics, some advantage and disadvantage. However, I want to remind you that when we treat the fracture of the radial head, your ultimate goal should be to prevent the post-traumatic osteoarthritis. And we need to highlight that the risk of post-traumatic osteoarthritis is directly linked to the preservation of the stability of the elbow. So it will be important to check and repair if needed the LUCL and the annular ligament after the radial head fixation or arthroplasty, the coronoid process or the anterior capsule. It will depend on the type of coronoid fracture. As structure, 
the medial collateral ligament. And all these structures are very important to achieve a good stability and prevent elbow arthritis at long term after your radial head fixation. So to conclude, for the treatment of the radial head, I first appreciate the displacement. And for patients with a low displacement, no mechanical block, I will opt for a conservative treatment, but I will keep aspiration as an alternative treatment in the context of sport medicine. And if a mechanical block is diagnosed, a reduction is also required in open or by arthroscopy. For high displacement and or combination, an osteosynthesis is required, whereas a radial head atropathy must be done if this fracture is unreconstructible. But don't forget the correlation between the combination of your radial head and the associated injuries. In the context of commutative radial head fracture, especially in a terrible triad injury, for example, I assume that the short and long-term outcome will depend on the treatment of the ligament and capsule injuries. So as you know, the restoration of the anatomy of the radial head can be challenging, but your main goal must be the restoration of the stability of your elbow.